Hi friends! Today I'm going to pick up my friend Mark and we're going to take his drone and go for a hike up to what we call the little chapel um, on the hill above Ahihik. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I stopped here to give you a sense of where we're going today. There's a little chapel right there. We're going to hike up there today. It's not the top of the hill, but it's up there a ways. On the left is the Ahihik Clinic, and we're going to turn left here. Ahead on the right, you can see the red truck where I buy my coffee. He's always sitting right there unless he's left to go back to his home in Veracruz to get some more coffee. There's a nice person who's letting me through. It's a narrow street. Sometimes you have to wait for other people to pass. This is not the street that we're going to the top of. That would be Galeana, and it's one street to the left. But it's one way coming down the hill, so we're going up the hill here to the end. And as we turn the corner here and go to the end this way, you'll see Casa de Abuela, the house of the grandmother, and those are the first two places I lived in Ahihik. The first time, two weeks, we stayed there in a B&B. &B, and then in this driveway right here to the left, I backed my old south wind in there and rented a two-bedroom house at the top of her property. And we stayed there for five months. Where we're going today to that chapel is a trail, and it takes... Uh, about half an hour to hike up there if you're in good shape and maybe longer. It's right there to the left is the trailhead. I have to go up here and make a U-turn to go back and park. Take nine. <laughs> <laughs> Take nine. <laughs> We're up at the top of Galeana and uh, now that I have Mark out here in the sunshine it's uh we get a little better picture of you. Hi, Mark. Hello. So, Mark brought his drone today, and we're going to go up this trail. Hopefully, uh, our knees, which haven't both, all four knees haven't been used as much as they should in the last few years. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We're, we're hoping we're going to make it all the way up there. And it's been a few years since I've walked this trail. I'm hoping I remember the way. Here's a picture for my son, the bug guy. It's a centipede. Might be a millipede. I don't have time to count the legs. You see this trench over here alongside the fence. When it rains hard, this could be totally full of water. That's what it's for. And you can see we're starting to get up a little ways. This is a popular trail for exercise here in the mountains above Ahihik, and there are several other trails too. But this one wasn't built for that reason. This is known as the Way of the Cross, or the Stations of the Cross, and along the way we're going to see some crosses. And they represent the stops along the way of Christ as he carried his cross towards Mount Calvary. And here we are at the first station of Christ. Each of these scenes represent a painting that was done in a church, I think it was in Portugal. And so each one represents, each station of the cross represents um, one of the paintings. There are 14 of the paintings. The first one that we're standing at here is Jesus is condemned to death. 
The second is Jesus carrying his cross. The third is where he falls for the first time. The fourth painting depicts his meeting of his mother, Mary, and so on through 14 of the paintings. The object of the stations is to help the Christian faithful to make a spiritual pilgrimage through their contemplation of Christ's passion on his path to his crucifixion. So what happens here at Easter time, usually Good Friday, is that many Mexicans go up this trail on their knees. I, 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 I can't imagine that. I've seen it, but ouch, ouch, ouch on the knees. Beetle picture. I think it's dead. Yep. Ooh, another beetle picture. There. Also dead. And another station of the cross. Oh, another bug picture. That's kind of a mean looking larvae. I don't know what that is. But uh, after this video airs and my son sees it, he'll tell us what it is. Oh, good news. Guess what this is? <laughs> Woo. You know, it's uh, it's about five years since I've been up here, and uh, I got to tell you, it's different in the lungs. So, what do you think? Can we find a place to launch the drone here? Absolutely, lots of space. So, tell me about this drone, the brand and the. Okay, the company is called DJI. Yeah. And this is a Mavic Pro. And we're looking at the bottom of it, and that's the camera, right? It shoots very good video. And here in your hand you have the controller. Right, this is the controller. And it says it's connecting, but it hasn't yet. Right, I haven't turned on the oh, uh, drone okay. yet. Once I turn on the drone, it'll connect. Uh -huh. And I also have this wired to my telephone. Okay. And you can use an Apple or you can use a Droid. Yeah. And DJI uses an app called the uh, um, the Mavic Pro app. Yeah. DJI 4. Let's turn this on so it can start connecting. Now it tracks satellites. And how many does it track? Usually 7 to 15. If it's tracking let's say 17 satellites yeah if I let go of the controls yeah it'll stay exactly where it is it won't even move right point in the same direction and everything exactly yeah if I was to lose my controller or drop it it will come back and land exactly where I took off really it's tracking no satellites so how does it know where it, well GPS I guess or does it Oh, yes. I think you told me before, it takes a picture when it goes, when it takes off, it takes a picture, so it knows how to match up exactly where it was? Exactly. It gets what it's called a home point. Home point. I'll take it, I'll take off, I'll go up to about 40 feet. Yeah. It'll take a picture of where it took off from, and it'll also use its GPS and its coordinates, it'll know exactly where it's at. And if something happens, let's say my controller or the battery goes dead. Mm-hmm. It'll automatically go up to 100 feet, which is what I have it preset to, because I want to go over the trees. Right. And I have it set for 100 feet. It'll go up to that point, and then it'll go straight to the coordinates where it took off from. And straight down. And then it'll slowly land. It'll go about two feet off the ground, then it'll go down slowly, slowly, and just land without a bump. So you have to make sure you don't take off underneath the patio roof. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> and also, let's say the battery's starting to wear down in the uh, drone. If I go so far out and it knows 
Now I'm going too far and it won't quite make it. It's a little bit smarter than I am. It'll start coming back. What is the range? I can usually go about 10 kilometers. What? Well, with the battery, it depends on the battery now. Wait. As far as the controller goes, about are, 10 kilometers. Are you telling me that you could fly that 10 kilometers away? Since it's autonomous. Meaning it can it, go where you tell yes, it to go? I can say, okay, I want you to fly halfway across the lake. Yeah. I want you to make a right turn and go a half a mile. Then I want you to come back to where I'm at and I want you to land. It's never good to do that. They say you should always have the drone in your in your sights. Well, good so, idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, By the way, yeah. speaking of eight, 8 to 10 kilometers, right straight across the lake, right here, is about 8 kilometers. Wow. Wow. So That's a distance. Yeah, I mean, water is deceptive, but that's supposedly how far it is across here. The 20 miles, or excuse me, 20 kilometers across is down at the east end of the lake. So That's pretty wide. Yeah. But for those people who do fly drones, you should know this. Always keep your drone within sight. You know, if it'll go 10 miles, doesn't mean you should or you can. My only experience that can relate to this what at all is a kite. And, of course, you want to keep it. <laughs> and speaking of, I just thought of that because look over here in the tree. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a kite. <laughs> it is. It got up a ways, didn't it? Yeah, I'm thinking it got away. Start your engine. Oh, engines. <laughs> and it, you're getting a... Okay, right there. You're getting a little red light. What does that mean? That's an obstacle in front of me. Once I take off, the yeah. obstacle in front of me will be gone. Whoa! It's not moving at all! No, it's pretty stable. <coughs> yeah. I'm going to start recording. We're tracking uh, 15 satellites right now. Okay. I'm going to start heading forward a bit. Smooth. And I am going to go up to 40 feet so I have a good home point. So once I get up to about 40 feet or so, it will know. I saw a green flash. What does that mean? Okay. That means it does have a home point. And so if something happens, it will return home. So it took the picture and it knows where it's at. Right. Well, here, let me see what's going on here. Oh, there we go. That's what the drone's seeing. Yep. And we'll have the drone look down now. So you can look right down at us. Woo! Oh, there we are. Way cool. Okay, let's have a cool look down. Uh, am I an obstacle? <laughs> it sounds I like, hope, it sounds I hope like I'm an obstacle. An obstacle. <laughs> I'm going forward as fast as I can right now. But it doesn't want to go forward because it sees an obstacle. Okay, and I'm going to do a camera trick. Oh crap, here it comes! No, 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 no! Okay, <laughs> it'll turn around. <laughs> okay, let's head out to the lake. Let's see if there's an obstacle. Uh oh, there's an obstacle. We better turn. Whoa! Okay. And we'll head off. This is my first time editing drone video and it occurs to me as I'm doing this that the whole purpose of having a drone is so that you wouldn't have to hike all the way up here to the chapel. The shore of Lake Chapala. That's Mont Garcia over there. And as I pan around here, it reminds me of what I'm always talking about, the warm breeze coming off of the lake all of the time, and then as the sun goes down, the heat rises out of the lake, which is a heat sink, and the cool air flows down out of the mountains. Every day like that, the breeze seems to change. 
These mountains are very important to the climate of Lake Chapala. They keep the air quality separated from the city of Guadalajara. If we do some more drone pictures, I would do it lower so that you can see the houses and see that there are many, many properties here on the north shore of Lake Chapala that are very, very nice properties. This is a great time of the year to be looking at the mountains. It's so green and lush. And we come in for a landing. Did you see those insects? I never noticed them when we were standing here. that I had to carry all the heavy equipment up this mountain, which included a 55 pound bag with all the drone equipment in it. Uh-huh, yeah, and right. my arms are about three inches longer than they were when we began this uh -huh. trip. Uh-huh, right, uh-huh. Yeah, don't forget who the editor is. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I can't edit it? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> This black, black bark. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.